star like this. We are now live. Okay, everyone. Good morning. Good, morning. Good seeing you guys. Thank you. And for those of you on Instagram, thank you so much for joining me this morning. And those of you on YouTube, thank you so much as well. I'm here to really talk to you guys about Purell. I keep getting all these questions and inquiries about it. I have a team here as well. And we're gonna go over some of the advantages of it. This is a PowerPoint presentation I put together based upon my experiences. And by all means, guys, if you have questions, I'm gonna come behind the phone screen to see which questions you may have, so bear with me. And if we wanna talk more at noon on Tuesday, I have my Tech Tuesday, we can answer questions live as well. So bear with me, because I'm not able to see what you're saying at the same time. But nonetheless, I have Lindsay here as well. I have Albert. Um, Kevin will be joining us a little bit later. And we are going to talk about not only pure oil, but oils in, in general. And some of the questions and myths that exist, how they can be dispelled, and why this is one of my, or the lubricant of choice for me and my team. So starting off, we're going to start with something really basic. What are synthetics? And this is an interactive session. And... For, so for the audience here that's physically in front of me, you may hear some voices, so on and so forth, and we'll take it from there, but Albert, when you think synthetic, what does that mean to you? Synthetic means uh, everything made by chemical. Okay, good. So chemical, like, you know, man-made almost. Um, what do you think about that, Lindsay, when you think of synthetic? When you hear that, what does that say to you, if anything? Uh, just alternative. Alternative. Very nice, very nice. Yeah. Because, you know, standard min mineral oils from the ground where we have Years and years, millions of years of compression of organic matter forms this crazy crude. And that's what people are used to hearing about, you know, lubricants made from crude oil. But synthetics, as you may see here, is a lubricant consisting of chemical compounds, as Albert has said, that are officially made, artificially made, as Lindsay had mentioned, synthesized. Synthetic lubricants can be manufactured using chemically modified petroleum components rather than whole crude oil, but it can also be synthesized from other raw materials. And this statement here is something we'll get into because there are some oils out there that claim to be synthetics, but they're really what we call in the chemical industry hydrocracked mineral oils. We're going to talk about that in a moment. Hydrocracked meaning mineral oils that have a molecular structure which is uneven. They are modified to simulate even molecules that you see in a synthetic and the API allows them to be designated as a synthetic. And you'd be shocked, a very popular oil is that. And there are inherent disadvantages there, which we'll get into in a moment. Okay. Why are synthetics needed? What do you think, guys? I mean, what I'm mean, pointing out, why do you think synthetics are needed, Lindsay or Albert? Why do we even need them? Who cares? Is there a reason why we need to have synthetics at all? Better. Lindsay said maybe they function better. You're absolutely correct. There are inherent disadvantages of the standard mineral oil. It couldn't really have a lot of heat or chemical resilience of today's automobiles, especially if you think of things in aerospace, in military, in agriculture. We're seeing a lot more heat and friction than we typically saw years ago in the Industrial Revolution. So synthetics are actually needed to be able to allow for great advantages. As I mentioned here, Based on my experience, synthetic oil is used as a substitute for lubricant refined from petroleum because, in general, it provides superior mechanical and chemical properties than those found in traditional mineral oils. So that's extremely important. For us car guys who are pretty crazy, we use a lot of ethanol-based fuels. Even the regular gasoline has 10% ethanol nowadays. That's hard on oils. For race guys who use a lot of methanol, that's hard. People who use acetone, some people use toluene. There are so many opportunities there where it's really, really tough, you know? Good day, Kenna. Thank you so much. Um, I'll, DJ, I will see what I can do to send you a slideshow. Just, I think I have an email somewhere, but if not DJ Ramarov, I will definitely make that happen. So, that leads me into base stocks. And what's really interesting is that synthetic motor oils are man-made oils from the following classes of lubricants. So there are quite a few base stocks. And what the base stock really is, as the name implies, is actually the basis of the oils. So there are probably very few base stock manufacturers on this planet, and many companies tend to use oils from those companies. And what really differentiates 
one oil from another is what type of base stock is being used and the additive package that's put into those base stocks, which is pretty exciting, you know? Greetings, Torque. Thank you so much. Thank you, Robert. I'm just responding to the, for those of you too, I'm just responding to the people who are here on, on Instagram who are making some comments, which is pretty cool. PAO or polyalpha olefin. Those are group four base oils that some of you may have heard of about PAOs. There are also synthetic esters, which have their advantages as well, which are known as the American Petroleum Institute Group 5. And API Group 3 base oils. These base stocks are pretty much base oils that are derived from mineral oils. And they are hydrocracked chemically modified to behave like a group four. Now, what are some of the challenges? They don't have the sheer stability that you may see with a PAO or a group five. They also have a very high evaporative function. And what that means is that they can easily dissipate. You know, put them in your engine, and after some miles, they disappear. <laughs> they tend to evaporate very easily. Um, a very popular group three oil is mobile one. Very popular. Very cost effective, behaves like synthetic, is allowed by the API to be called a synthetic, but the base is primarily an organic oil. Purol takes advantage of both the PAO, which is group 4 and group 5, and combines the two. So you have some oils that are group 5 only. These are very expensive. You have some that are group 4 only. But the brand that I find appealing has a combination of these two, which gives it the advantage of very high shear stability and very high resilience to heat, which is pretty nice. Which brings me to Pure Oil that I mentioned a moment ago. And here are some of the things that I found out about Pure Oil. One is derived from the aerospace industry. And why is this even important? Who cares? Why do you think it's even important? Any of you? Why is it important that Pure Oil came from aerospace? Who gives a right sense? But why? Stuff from um, aerospace is more tough yeah. and stronger. Absolutely. I would mention that aerospace stuff must be much tougher and stronger. And he's right because. In aerospace, they see a lot more heat, friction, and just amazing temperatures that we never even experience in automotive. So if these guys can have the technology to be able to withstand aerospace conditions, what's automotive? It's a huge advantage. For companies who don't have that advantage, they're at a disadvantage. Another cool advantage is that Puro is made and blended in the U.S. Not from Belgium, not from China, not from Brazil, not that I have anything against those regions, but here in the good old USA, it's where it's made and blended. And that's a huge advantage for me as well, which I find it being. When it comes to high temperatures in terms of viscosity and low temperatures in terms of starting the car and making sure that it does a good job in colder regions, Purell stays extremely stable and has that stable viscosity at both extremes of that temperature spectrum, which is extremely important. And it's something that I found very, very appealing as well. This is something I love so much. When it comes to sheer stability, it's ability to keep metal components apart from each other. And um, for those of you who are really into cars, I have Lindsay here who's part of the team. She's not super into cars yet. <laughs> So I may have to break things down very nicely, which is okay. And for those of you who don't know, it's a great lesson. And for those of you who do know, it's a good refresher. But inside the internal engine, there are a lot of metal components that can touch each other. And when it rubs together, it causes a lot of friction, which takes power to overcome. It creates a lot of heat. And it can easily break down oils. So the fact that Pure has great shear stability, it has the, the, the ability not to break down easily when metal components are rubbed around it. So the viscosity layers are extremely stable. Chemical resilience is very important to me because I love E85. E85 is an ethanol fuel, where it's 85% ethanol and about 15% gasoline, so you don't drink it <laughs> as a decanter. But nonetheless, um, the fact that it doesn't dissolve very easily or it's not easily affected or it doesn't reduce the efficiency of the oil is one of the reasons why I love Pure. It has very, very stable and very high chemical resilience, especially with exotic fuels. 
something that we hear a lot for us Porsche guys is that a guy goes to a dealership, he has a bunch of the recommended oil in his car with the M, it starts with an M. It has a lot of evaporated loss. After, by the time you get an oil change, they're down a quart or two quarts. Well, Pure Oil does not have that. It has very decreased evaporating loss. Because of this combination of the base oils being Group 4 and Group 5, you don't see the evaporating loss you see with Group 3s that are somewhat popular in the market. When it comes to oxidation, thermal breakdown, and oil sludge problems, it's absolutely non-existent with Pure Oil. It's a very stable compound. It's something I find extremely appealing. And last but not least, something I really found from this page is that it has superior protection against ash. Now, for those of you who are turbocharged, I don't, you know, we, I don't know if you remember back in the day we used to have turbo timers. The reason why turbo timers exist and what a turbo timer is, Lindsay, is, is this device you put in your car and when you shut off your car, it keeps the car running. Okay. And the reason why it's doing that is trying to allow, allow opportunity for the engine to cool down, the turbo to cool down, because the old school oils used to get really hot when they are turned off inside the turbo and it does what's called coking, where it breaks down. And it clogs the passage of the turbo, kills the turbo, it's absolutely horrible. Well, you don't have that challenge with pure oil at all. It has very high resilience to high temperatures and has superior protection against ash or any kind of sludge being formed inside the engine, which is pretty nice. Thank you, Kappa. Appreciate the kind words. Some good comments and questions here. One thing I tend to like quite a bit is that it has extended drain intervals, which is great for the environment. And what I mean by that, we all heard the 3,000, three-month thing, where change your oil every 3,000 months, change your oil every three months. Well, yeah, that was great for back in the day with oils that didn't have the resilience and ability to continue to protect. I did a crazy test. Now, I don't encourage any of you to do it because I'm crazy. I'm crazy. But on my Chevy Silverado truck, I left pure on there for 14,000 miles. And it still was extremely good. Even had it tested, it was very nice. Now, the problem I saw was my filter. Because after, I'd say about six, 7,000 miles, my filters would get clogged. And you know what happens when my filter gets clogged? We just rubbish that was trying to get filtered in the oil. Because Pure did a good job in cleaning things up and keeping things proper. My oil filter will bypass. So that's a good safety mechanism in oil filters. If it gets too clogged up, it bypasses. But when it bypasses, it doesn't really keep things very clean, does it? So. Because of that, I encourage all of my friends and all of my customers and the clients and, and, and acquaintances to at least, because peop, the easy thing to do is just change your filter and keep going, but most people won't do that. So it's better to just tell people to do six to 7,000 miles, and I've done that with much success. Now, if you're racing in very dusty con conditions, you want to cut that down to like 5,000. If you're using some crazy fuels where it's really, really rich, crazy methanol, or you're doing like, you know, 11.0 AFRs with E85, of course, change that to 5,000 miles, but you can get away with much longer drain intervals, and that's less waste. That's less environment, that's less descent to get recycled, it's really much better. If you think about that, and I sell Pure Oil for $14.99, that's MAP, it ends up being more cost effective. You can buy a seven, eight dollar a quart oil, change it every 3,000 miles, and it ends up being more than Pure Oil with a 7,000 mile oil change. Just saying. I love this. I drive daily. Many of you ask me, what do I drive daily? I drive a 2017 Ionic Hybrid. Yeah, I get a lot of stuff out on the street and have a lot of fun, but um, none the, none the, uh, uh, nonetheless, when I put Pure Oil in some of my engines, I know it's because of, it, it's, is this a good word, lubricity? So where did I made up? <laughs> but because of lubricity, how slippery the oil is, slippery, it allows for improved gas mileage. You don't see the friction that you typically experience on metal-to-metal -metal contact, especially in the rings. It does a good job of that, so my gas mileage gets up very nicely, which is pretty cool. I love this. I'm touching the screen. Forgive me, guys. I love this. 1730 parts per million of zinc. And why is that important? Zinc is so important. There are people... Many of you who race, many of you who race, there are people out there who tend to use a diesel fuel, no, no, diesel fuel, diesel oil, um, that thing is one that's Rotella, to try and make up for the lack of zinc that's in oils. And there's a reason why there's not as much zinc in oils today as it was before. You think the old school SH oils, um, SN oils, or what we have nowadays, it's like an API designation, 
for the oil um, efficiency and stability. Back in the day, there was a belief that zinc would kill a catalytic converter. And it does if it disassociates very easily from the base oil. Now, a lot, what a lot of people don't know is that this contamination happened at 200,000 miles. <laughs> but it's, it was designated by many manufacturers not to be able to use zinc, put too much zinc in there. So back in the day when we used to have like even 1,200 parts per million of zinc on regular oils or maybe 800, it's now going down to 600, 700. Even the rotella that many people use that used to be 1,200 ppm is now 800. So, and what's the bad thing about removing zinc from oils? Your valve train suffers. I do a lot of cam shafts at BC Motor here, and I see so many cam cores come in that are just worn down. The scratches on cam shafts, all that lack of valve train protection, all the lack of protection for push rods is because zinc has come down. And what does it do? It's cheaper for oil companies, so it's great for them, right? It's great for manufacturers because when your engine goes out, you buy another one or you buy another car, so it helps them. But for us who really know about protecting our cars, we want zinc. And we want zinc, not just any zinc, zinc that associates with the base compound very well. And what I mean by that is that in, in pure oil's formulation, it doesn't disassociate from the compound very easily. And what that means is that it doesn't contaminate your catalytic converters because it doesn't go away from the oil base compound. It just, it's bonded very nicely. Gives you the protection you need, which is very nice for your valve train. I look at my Porsche, flat Porsches, flat engine Porsches, flat, flat sixes. I look at my um, VTEC high revving engines. I look at my drag race cars. This protects me. My engines look really, really good. The valve train is absolutely immaculate. And by doing that, if you look at back at Puros bottles, I should have brought one here. Um, there's an SN designation. So current standards for safety and reliability for oils. Current safety standards, Puros meets and exceeds it even with this much amount of zinc and not doesn't dissociate and hurt catalysts. That's why it's one of the popular brands for dealers to carry. Do we need a break? We're good? Okay. Do we need a break? Let me know. I'll give you a break. Okay. Better lubrication during extreme cold weather starts. I get this question at BC. My engine needs a 5W40. We talked about that this morning, right, Upper? But Puro has 1040. Well, the compound is so good, especially in colder temperatures, that you can use the Pure 10W40 where a 540 or 1040 is recommended. So even during extreme cold temperatures, because of its lubricity, and using that word again, it gives the ability to be able to crank your car and have it lubricate very nicely, very quickly, without using a super, super thin oil, which is a challenge because with a super, super thin oil, you have to add so much of the, what is known as free, um, uh, um, viscosity modifiers to get it to that temperature. And what do I mean? If you have a 040 oil, it starts off with a zero weight base oil. And you add all these viscosity modifiers, which are polymer based. Polymers are fancy way of saying like plastics. When your oil temperatures get up, you know what breaks down? You know what causes so much breakdown in coking? Those viscosity modifiers. That's what breaks down. The more you have in oil, the more chance it has for breaking down, the more chance you have for coking and problems. If you can have an oil that can lubricate in low temperatures, Without having a ton of viscosity modifiers, it is ideal, and that's what Pure Oil does provide. And what is the base advantage of that? Longer engine life, which is what we all desire. I'm big on reliability. Hang tight, guys. I'm going to see who just came in. Give me a second. Join us. Okay. Which nice. is cool. So guys, um, someone just came in, um, a client, and what's your name? Carlos. Come on. Hi. So guys, this is Carlos. Hello. He came in, he came to buy some, what did you come to buy? 5W30 and then also breaking oil. And some breaking oil. So he yes. came to buy some pure oil right now and he has a little bit of time so he's going to join us. So before Lindsay and I take care of him, um, have a seat. That's a nice right. seat for you. Thank you. And we're just talking about oils right now. Right. Sorry about the blank screen, but we're talking about some of the advantages of pure oil. And I have people on YouTube. And I have people on Instagram, All right. and so it works out, so welcome. Do you need some water or anything, or are you no, good? I'm good. good? Okay. So we're talking about some of the advantages that I've seen with Pure All. This is a little presentation I put together myself. Increased horsepower and torque due to less initial drag on the engine. And guys, I was just telling Albert about this earlier on. The guys from Pure All came to me as a customer. 
And when they provided me some compounds that I was able to test, I was so impressed. I begged, and this is before they came to market, I begged them to keep it. And in my own drive car, I picked up 12 wheel. And this is on an NA, single cam drive car. And I saw that because of the reduction in friction because of the extreme diversity of the oil. It's absolutely smashing. It contains compounds, of course, that aid in preservation of the engine. We talked about valve train before and you were here, but the fact that it has a good amount of zinc and how it's bonded to the base compound, it protects the valve train immensely. So you don't have scarred up camshafts and rubbish valve train and problems with your valve guides. It's really, really good. And it's something I found that was very advantageous for my program as well. When you look at American Petroleum Institute, which is the governing body for an oil that is, a, that is a reliable and, and, and has very good protective qualities in America, is the API is the governing body for that, JASO in Japan, and ACEA is in Europe. Puro, I'm glad to say, meets and exceeds all current APA, JASO, and ACEA requirements. So whether you have a BMW, a Honda, Subaru, Mercedes-Benz, a domestic vehicle from any of the big three, you can have the confidence that Purell will be able to take care of your ID problems. He's like, get back in school now, huh? Yeah. Sorry. No, that's right. <laughs> and something I love, guys, you guys know this, the dyno proven performance. So I've done dyno to myself. Um, yes, you got driven. I'm talking about uh, uh, Purell. Hello, Daryl from the UK, who's one of our dealers. Thank you so much for joining us today. All the way from the pond. So let's talk about some of this dyno proven performance. On my own dyno, what I saw, and forgive me, some are decent power engines and some are like kind of low horsepower engines, but I want to be able to show the full gamut of that. And then I also have, I think, a dyno chart from uh, a dyno place that does a lot of V8s in the South Bay, and I have his dyno chart information here as well that he sent to me that he was extremely proud of, and I was too. This is from an Elantra GT that barely had 2,000 miles. So bone stock Elantra, yeah, guys, only made, you know, a little bit over 100 horsepower to the wheels. But here's what's interesting. Compared to the oil that they, that they recommended, which is the oil starts with a Q. Sounds like a state. It came in making 118 horsepower. I switched over to the same weight, Purell 0W20, which is the recommended weight for that Elantra GT. Look at what I picked up. Now, for those of you who can see, this is a 6.1 wheel. Six wheel horsepower on just an oil change. Now, that shocked me because I've had intake systems <laughs> that don't do that. I've had exhaust systems that don't do that. So six wheel horsepower on a 118 wheel horsepower setup was really, really impressive. And I was very excited about that. I was super excited. Look at that torque. You know, peak torque when the engine is most efficient? Look at the gains there. That's where the engines are most efficient. They still gain, which is pretty nice. And how did I do this test? It wasn't just me just pouring out oil and pouring the other one in. I did what is called, what I refer to as the ABAB testing. So what does that mean? I start off with, let's say, the Q oil, the one that was in here. And I have more samples of it. I do three runs of it, I drain it out, put a new filter. Put in a reference oil, which is usually just a nondescript, regular, you know, could be a breaking oil, could be a mineral oil, but it's very stable. Do three runs, then put in the other oil of choice, in this case, let's say pure oils, the B. Do three runs, capture all the data, drain that out, put in a reference oil again, do three runs, drain it out with a new filter, and put back the original oil just to make sure that the results are consistent. It's a very long, tedious process, but one that gives me results. And what you see here is not the best or the lowest, it is the average of it, which is very interesting. So, I don't take the best of all worlds and say, oh, I throw that out. The worst, I throw that out. I take what is the common one. And that's what you see here to show that it's a very stable environment. And the test is done very, very well. Here's another one. Elantra GT. Now, here's where it gets interesting. I put in a thicker oil. You know, so for those who road race, many times they don't want to stay with what the manufacturer designated or if they're in a hot region. So just to see how... Will Pure even still do well if I put in a thicker oil that was recommended compared to what it came in with? And look what happened. I still gained 3.8. 3.8 horsepower on a thicker oil in the Elantra GT, which is very interesting. So even when you run a thicker oil, you still gain more power compared to the base oil that it came in, which is pretty good. Any questions or concerns? No. No? Okay. Now, 
How does it fare, however? Oh, Profing said he sees all the time. Mark Andrew, I don't have the chart here, but I did test it. Um, the Rotella that you just mentioned is a, is a mineral oil. It does not do extremely well at all. It may have the zinc to help, and now the zinc has been taken out. But there's no advantage whether it's price or zinc or the lack of protection because it is a mineral-based oil. There's no advantage of using that nowadays, especially when you have Pure on nowadays, which is about $14 a quart and has the capability of protecting better and the longer drain intervals. It's really, really good. And I'm so pleased with it. That's why I go out of my way to make sure that people know about it. It's really, really good. Now, this, how does it compare to other performance oils? Not just a stock recommendation. Now, for those of you who are in here with me, you can see what brand it is. Yeah. Um, it's the oil that starts with a T, a brand I'm extremely familiar with. And this is in a Porsche 911. So yeah, guys, air-cooled Porsches don't make a ton of power. They make good torque, but they don't make a ton of horsepower. Yeah, a K-series can spank it. Yeah, you're right. But <clears throat> instead of comparing to a stock oil, let's compare to a performance oil that costs $20 a quart. So this is an oil called SR5. Pure oil versus a very expensive boutique oil. Pure oil still gained weight to weight, 10W40, 5 horsepower to the wheels compared to another high performance boutique oil that also has high zinc. Not as much zinc as uh, Pure All, but still is a performance oil that a lot of people like. And with this, we saw a very nice five horsepower gain. Now, I'm gonna show you guys something that no one's really ever seen on one of my own experimental engines. Um, Taylor's asking, what about Royal Purple? Oh. So Taylor, great question about Royal Purple. Um, first of all, I don't consider it a boutique oil, so it doesn't have the properties and the protection that you may see. Have you ever looked at the bottom of your bottle after you pour it out? You can see some dye there. That is not very good for your engine. Based upon my experience on the dyno, I saw significant horsepower gains and cooler temperatures with pure oil compared to the oil you just mentioned. So no matter what, especially for the price and also lack of dyes, you kind of want something that's really pure. The pure oil is still supreme in my experience. But I'm going to show you guys a chart that I've never showed anyone ever. This is one of my earlier F-Series engines that made over 400 horsepower to the wheels. Um, this was after a brief break-in. It wasn't one of my most aggressive engines, but I'll just show you something that happened. When I compared another oil that was with a T that I just mentioned a moment ago versus Pure Oil. And here it is. This is a single cam engine. And what I want to show you, pay attention to you, is that with the oil that was there before, that was also a 5W30, you can see the horsepower started falling off a little bit. But look at what happened with Pure Oil. Not only did I gain 9 foot-pounds of torque and 12 wheel at 7,000 RPMs, my horsepower <laughs> carried and kept going. So why does my horsepower keep carrying on? Because friction is reduced significantly. Look at this. My dynamo's not falling. It keeps going. I'm still drawing it. Still going. No, you won't go that far. But look at that, guys. That is a single overhead cam engine. Peak torque is where engine is most efficient. It picked up a lot. So there's a lot of horsepower there, a lot of friction that's near peak torque. Engine is very efficient there. We still picked up power, which is very nice. And it's something I found extremely, extremely appealing, you know? Still, Phillips is saying, what are the drawbacks of Pure Oil, if any? There's one drawback that I don't find appealing, and it's this. It's not available in a lot of places. So, that being said, it's, it's a huge disadvantage. If I would encourage you guys, if you have a speed chart that you love, ask them for it. If you have relationships with like Turn 14 or Motivicity or Promotion or Motion or, or, or Launch or any of these, uh, Ask them for it. They can provide it for you. If you're a Porsche guy and this SSF or Pelican parts, ask them. They can get it. I have it, but and I ship around the world, but it's easier if you have something nearby. Daryl from Pro Phoenix, uh, Daz, he is in the UK. He can get it to you. Um, if you need more, he can definitely get to you. I don't think there's anyone in France. Maybe Daz can send that to you there or, or Germany. But that's the disadvantage I see there. It's, it's really... It's, slight, it's a slight challenge to get in many regions of the world as we speak. But this is fantastic. So forget about what I saw. Me. I'm, I don't know what I'm talking about. Forget me. What have other people seen? This is R&D Dino Gardena. 
I like this guy because Darren from R&D, a lot of people don't know this, taught me how to build engines properly. I used to do plastic gauge and build my engines. He taught me how to use precision equipment. equipment. And this is what he saw on an engine with a V8, which is amazing. And he saw a very nice gain. And just to quantify that for you, for those who can see, this is about a 22 horsepower gain on a small block Chevy. 22 wheel with just an oil change. And this is versus, oh, what's that weird oil? It's, it's an oil, can I even say the name? It's an oil that sounds like someone's name. That's all I can say. It could be like a Brad, or like a pen, or it could be like a, you know, something like that. <laughs> uh, oh, the live froze? I'm so sorry, guys. This is the live froze. I'm so sorry. Hopefully, you guys can still see it. Is the live still good now? Oh, it's working. Okay, good. Beautiful. Beautiful. So, even whether it's a domestic, modified, or import crazy like me, or stock Porsche, this really makes me believe that a lubricant could be a high performance part. It's not just an oil, it's a part. Um, I'm here to dispel all the myths that oil is just oil, it's not. It makes a big difference in performance and can be a very cost effective performance. So, let's talk about the different types of oils that are available. Um, the Pure Elite is one that I find extremely appealing. It has a unique added package, which was developed in the Petroleum Technology Lab in the US. Dozens and dozens, and I was in part of this process of formulations were tested in engine dyno platforms, and then the optimal fluid was identified. It gave great efficiency, impeccable oil life, amazing lubricity. Ah, oh, lubricity! Ha ha ha! Energy protection and improved horsepower and torque gains, which is pretty exciting for me. And what are some of the popular ones? You can be picking up 530 today, right? 530 and breaking oil. Breaking oil? Yes. Well, Pure does have a 020, which I showed some of the results with the Elantra GT earlier today. It's recommended in daily driving, racing, extreme economy for those who are big into hypermiling. And for modified or street engines where 020 or 520 is specified. You can use Pure 020. And where do we see those? As Albert and I were talking about earlier, you can see them a lot of newer engines, which where efficiency and gas mileage is very important. The clearances are much tighter. You see that a lot and in hybrids and in definitely new engines. And, and overseas, I know that Darrow uses this for a lot of racing because it's very cold in the UK. So he does that. Um, 530 that he came to pick up today is a popular for the EG EFK series guys, S2000s, NSXs. But it's recommended for use in daily driving, modified street engines, and racing as well. And I use it in my own inside drag car. Where the SAE 530 or 1030 is specified. And where do we typically see that? In older chassis, the older EFs, EKs, EGs, EPs, street engines. What car do you write? Uh, type S or Type R. And type, type S, Type R. Beautiful. Okay, soft EG. Very nice. Yeah. So he has EG as well. And you don't know what that means. <laughs> we'll bring it down to you later. Just, yeah, just, it, it, it takes time. It takes time. I'm trying to deal with FK8s and I'm still trying to learn all kind of crazy stuff. So it's funny. Well, now for me, one of my top sellers is the 10W40. And it's recommended for use in daily driving. Definitely in racing as well, off-road and modified street engines where a 5W40 or 1040 is specified, you know? Um, and where do we typically see those? Definitely a lot of boosted applications and fully built engines. An engine that may have required a 020 or 530 but the clearance is bearing clearance is a little bit looser. They can have fun with this, which is pretty nice. With all the advantages we mentioned earlier, 2050, yeah, this is a fairly popular one as well. Also used in daily driven cars, in racing, whether you're on the street or off-road, where a 15W50 or 2050 is specified. And we see that a lot in high horsepower builds. Um, my 1,000 horsepower Civic in the back, this is what I run, pretty crazy. Um, my wagon, I run 1040, because my clearance are pretty tight. The Odyssey, I run 530, believe it or not. That came with a 020 designation, I run 530 in Odyssey. And I know that uh, my dealer, Aaron from Drift Motion, also rides 530 in his Supra. And he does a lot of half mile crazy racing with it, which is pretty good. Now, the gentleman who came in a moment ago, he also came to pick up some Pure Honest, which is the braking oil. And it's a premium braking oil, and it's specifically formulated to and blend 
blended to ensure proper ring seating, breaking of all internal engine components, which is extremely important, especially upon initial startup and making sure that you have excellent longevity with that particular oil. It's recommended running time of 30 minutes or longer in new rebuilt engines for higher performance, whether you're doing street restoration, testing, or racing applications. So the kind of testing I use for reference this is a good reference oil to use. You can use the racing applications as well. What I typically do for street driven cars, um, I pour it in, break it on the street, I do at least 2,000 miles or about. I don't keep a steady RPM, I kind of vary it to get the vacuum a little bit on and off, help seal when I'm driving around. If it's a car that I can't drive, like my drag cars or some crazy center seat Porsche, I do, a dyno, I do a full dyno session. And by the time I'm done with my partial and full throttle dyno session, it's broken in, and I can pour it out and put in my oil of choice. And it comes in two designations. You have the Onyx 30 SAE and SAE 40 as well. Anything that's 020, 530, zero, you know, um, uh, 520, 1030, I tend to use this for break-in. Anything thicker, whether it's a you know, requirement is a 540, 040, 2050, straight 50, where I use the SAE 40. So this pretty much covers all the gamut when it comes to engines that you actually really need, which is pretty interesting. Let's see what we're doing so far. How do I get a job for you? Um, from me or for me? Because I'm not looking right now. But if you want to get a job from me, you can write to us at sales at bcmo.com. And then uh, I and Lindsay and Albert will evaluate you properly. Thank you, Grip Show Off. Appreciate the kind words and the waiting. So, what is on the horizon? Above and beyond the synthetic oils and the breaking oils, there is a semi synthetic. I got a hint from the guys from Pure that there's a semi synthetic they're thinking about getting out there. And where is that ideal? Well, semi synthetics are all frequently referred to as synthetic blends. They're blends of conventional or mineral oil, which is like, you know, organic oil, and combined with the synthetic, but typically no more than 30% of the synthetic. Why do you think anyone would want to do this? Why is it important? What do you, can you guys think of any reason why this should even exist? Uh, best of both worlds. And what, what, could a, what, could, what advantage could a mineral oil even provide? Any advantage at all? What do you think? Uh, no idea. It's cheaper. <laughs> so one advantage of a blend is usually more cost effective. So if you can get the advantages of some synthetic, and blending with a mineral oil is more cost effective. You may get some advantages, which is not so crazy. And this is good for people who, I would say, like, let's say air cooled VW guys, air cooled Porsche guys, where synthetic oils can really seep through the, the, the seals. And, you know, they say a Porsche, every Porsche leaks. Well, a lot of leaking happens because of cases and the old school, uh, uh, um, how should I say, uh, adhesives that are used to put a case together. If someone really doesn't do any kind of um, high performance racing and they just want something better protection and they're really on a budget, that could be of an advantage to them. They have the ability to provide de engine defense somewhat at higher temperatures, uh, so so fairly engine loads, and they don't have the evaporative function that you may see with a regular mineral oil, especially if you combine it with a proper synthetic. You don't tend to see that. They're a good choice for drivers who put heavy loads on engines during intensive usage, um, like towing, racing, off-roading. It could be. For me, on my race cars, I'm a full synthetic guy. Um, but for those who are really on a budget, like uh, if you're doing a lot of racing with lemons, 24 hour of lemons, then maybe you can do that. Um, if you're an occasional guy who just has fun on the street, this may be an option for you. But um, like I mentioned, and why am I saying all this? Because I like to give a balanced presentation. It's not about one side. I like to give balance and have something that's very good. They are designed to have many of the benefits of synthetic oils, such as extended life, improved viscosity indexes, but general low cost, as I mentioned, in a full synthetic oil. So why am I even sharing any of this? And the first time I said it was as far back as 1966 in the hood, back in the day. But I'm saying that because Pure is interested in coming out with a what is called a premium fusion. It will be formulated semi-synthetic to fill the market need for cost-effective, highly protective motor oil. So it won't be as Bombay. I can't believe I'm saying that, Bombay. 
It won't be as Bombay as the Elite, but it will be a little bit better protection with much better protection than conventional oils with a much lower cost. It will still have more zinc than what you guys have out there, but it could have a better cost gradient, which is pretty nice. Oh, I missed something here. Sorry. It's me. It will have about 1,600 parts per million of zinc. If you remember, Purell has the, the synthetic. Elite has about 1,730 parts per million of zinc. Um, you have, of the mineral base stocks, from what they've told me, it's going to have a high-end mineral base and a really high-end synthetic. So you have a combination of, of both worlds. And yes, they do have different grades of the minerals. It will be a superior synthetic blend to anything you can see out there. And as I mentioned earlier, it's really ideal for air-cooled Porsches and Volkswagens, which is pretty nice. And they are planning on having it launch in about the second quarter of 2019, which is pretty nice. And they sent me some samples of how the bottle would look. So it won't have a nice, pretty silver bottle, but it's very simple in shape. Um, it will be 85 compatible. It will not be recommended for methanol fields. It just doesn't have that protective quality that you see for methanol. But for those who are like E85 or E10 or any blends of that, it will be good. Um, it won't have, you know, it's not very... Very super pretty, but the bottle is still pretty cool, which is pretty nice. And I think they're gonna have like two blends initially, a 530 and a 1040. Start with that. Let's see. So far. Um, yes, it is a class. Yeah. Oh yeah. So um, you struggle to break in the engine and stay. Yeah, you don't want to break in on synthetic. Um, synthetic oils do a very good job in allowing for very minimal contact of metal to metal and with a new freshly bit engine you want a very gentle interaction of the rings and the cylinder to allow for better seal and the Pure Onyx allows you to do that while giving you the zinc while having cleansers that can really gently cleanse and scrub rubbish when you drain it's really nasty all that crap comes out lint and all kind of nonsense so that being said you don't want to break in using a synthetic you don't want to use a proper breaking oil with good potato qualities that are pretty cost effective, which the Pure Onyx does offer all of that. And you may see some ad campaigns out there as time progresses. I was going to make sure that more of that happens to talk about Pure and the advantages it has. And you may hear lubrication perfective or lubricants perfective with Pure which is pretty nice. And let's talk about some summaries. So, in summary, Pure Onyx is a high end breaking oil, Pure Infusion Synthetic is a semi synthetic blend. Pure Elite is 100% synthetic motor oil, which is my favorite, definitely. They all exceed meat and exceed American API, Japanese JASO, and European ACEA requirements for safety and reliability. They're all made in the United States of America, in the Midwest, for those of you who are very curious. It's great for street applications and has superior high strength efficiency, protective quality, and cooling for high performance applications as well. And for those of you who have shops or even enthusiasts, it does is a great way to set yourself apart for your customers, for yourself, for your buddies with aerospace technology. So guys, that pretty much ends my presentation today. You're a very good sport for hanging out. The customer who just came and he's hanging out to learn more about Pure All. But I will be on again, guys, at 12 noon today, being Tuesday for Tech Tuesday. If you guys have more questions, let me know. In the meantime, what questions may you have here that may be able to help? Okay. So, guys, I've held you here. I've held you captive here for almost an hour. So, thank you so much for joining me this afternoon or this morning. I will see you in about an hour, 12 minutes at noon for Tech Tuesday. If you have questions, join me then. We'll talk more. Take care, everyone. Cheers.